is part three in a series on hemoglobin A1C goals. <clears throat> and this is a watershed uh, study. It's the ACCORD trial. Why is it a big deal? Well, up until the ACCORD trial, the evidence was looking like the lower you go in terms of hemoglobin A1C, the better off the patient was. That's not what happened here with the ACCORD trial. This was um, published in the New England Journal in 2008. What they, this, what they actually had to do or decided to do was stop the trial early because of increased mortality in the intensive control group. This uh, tore a lot of people up. They were, did not expect that. After you get into the details, it makes a lot more sense. And so we'll cover that in just a minute. But first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, and this is the Prevention Channel. We're here to uh, help you understand the, um, <clears throat> the science behind prevention. So this was a big study, 10,251 patients, um, mean age, 62 years. Uh, they targeted a hemoglobin A1C level below 6. The patients came into the study with a level of over eight. Um, <clears throat> the primary outcome was a composite. It was non-fatal MI, uh, fatal MI, non-fatal uh, stroke, fatal stroke. They had uh, planned to follow these folks for about three and a half years. Again, 10,000. So this was one of those studies where I remember uh, uh, back at Hopkins we used to talk about it's a little bit scary when you do one of these giant roll-up studies because uh, whatever the findings are, nobody's ever going to argue with them in the future. They're just going to accept them, and even large studies uh, fail and have, have problems. No study's perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, this study didn't fail. I think it actually showed reality, but I think we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. We've over-interpreted this study to mean we all, you should always have uh, very lax goals for diabetes, and that's not at all true. Um, the reality is you find it earlier, um, hit it hard, focus on lifestyle, and you have a huge positive impact for the patient. But let's get back to the ACCORD study itself. At one year, the stable uh, mediated uh, uh, median high uh, uh, hemoglobin, pardon my, hemoglobin levels were uh, 6.4 and 7.5 in the intensive group and the standard group. Um, the primary outcome was 352 patients in the intensive uh, therapy group uh, with 371 in the standard therapy group. So you would think, you know, maybe it worked, but it wasn't significant. And uh, these increase were in non-fatal MIs in the uh, standard therapy group. However, at the same time, 257 patients in the intensive therapy group died. Two, only 203 in the standard therapy group died. In other words, the guys that had the higher hemoglobin A1C level died less. Now, <clears throat> why did this happen? Before I go... Um, deeper into this, to the text, I'm going to do something which uh, often helps. Once you begin to understand the basics of a study, if you go to the tables, you'll get a lot of good information. So this uh, table is basically, who were these people? What did they have coming in? Well, they were uh, median age 62, their weight was 94 kilograms. So what is that? 200 pounds? It's, uh, these are hefty people. The BMI was 32. Uh, a healthy BMI is 22. So these people were not healthy coming into this study. Uh, their waist circumference was 42 inches. Uh, systolic blood pressure was over 130. Over a third of them were on insulin. Most of them were on uh, metformin and or sulfonylureas uh, or pyo or one of the other uh, thialazine uh, dions. Their fasting plasma glucose was 175, and their hemoglobin A1C on average was over 8. So again, 
Oh, and by the way, they part of this, the design of the study was to take people that already had cardiovascular disease. So again, these were people that obviously had had insulin resistance for a decade or two and had now had uh, insulin, uh, insulin-related or insulin-level uh, diabetes. So again, these people were way down that diabetic highway. Now, what happened? <clears throat> if you look at this, these are called Kaplan-Meier curves. Basically, they just show the, uh, what happened over time in terms of the outcome. As we said earlier in the study, the standard group actually had more outcomes. Um, the majority of this had to do with non-fatal MIs. But if you look at actual deaths, um, the intensive therapy group had more deaths. Now, <clears throat> if you're like me, then you start asking the question, what kind of deaths? Were they cardiovascular? Were these hypoglycemic uh, episodes? Um, I'll cover that in just a minute, but before I do, I want to make a brief point. <clears throat> There was an average weight gain, I believe it was over 10 kilograms in the um, intensive therapy group. That one fact tells you how they accomplish these lower hemoglobin A1C levels in the intensive therapy group. They did it with medication, usually uh, both insulin and uh, the pioglitazone. The glitazones are going to cause weight gain. So <clears throat> they, didn't cause, they didn't accomplish this with lifestyle. They accomplished it with medications. So again, I'm, I'm going to jump back to an editorial comment. We, uh, I've been in prevention my whole life. Uh, this, the evidence is out there in terms of science. Um, lifestyle modification is far more important and medications are there as a crutch. They, however, used the crutch only. So, um, <clears throat> as, as I wrap up, I just want to make one uh, quick comment about the types of death. They were cardiovascular. Um, any death, 257 in the intensive group versus 203. Uh, unexpected or presumed cardiovascular uh, death, 86 in the intense group versus 67. Uh, fatal MI, 19 in the intensive group versus 13 in the standard group. Fatal congestive heart failure, 23 in the intensive group versus 16 in the standard group. Uh, and fatal procedures specifically for cardiovascular diseases, 10 in the intensive group versus 3 in the standard group. There was a significant increase in um, conditions other than cancer or cardiovascular disease, 50 versus 35. I couldn't get the information on that, but the bottom line is, yes, you did have more cardiovascular deaths uh, in the intensive group. Um, <clears throat> as you look at, at some of the relationships uh, of other issues to death, you see some very interesting things. If you had not had uh, cardiovascular disease already, you did better in the intensive group. If you'd already had cardiovascular disease, you did better in the standard group. Um, age was not an issue. So again, this is not so much an issue of aging. It's an issue of how far you are down that diabetic highway. If you came in with uh, lower uh, hemoglobin A1Cs, you did better in the intensive group. If you came in with higher, then you did better in the standard group. Uh, as you see, as you look through this for death from any cause, you see the same thing. Again, it's not an age-related issue. It's an issue of taking people that have very adva significantly advanced disease and trying to drop their hemoglobin A1C using medications, not lifestyle. So again, <clears throat> I don't think the study results are, are wrong. I think we have interpreted them. I think we... The evidence has been there from day one, and we're tending to ignore it. Lifestyle is still the king. Thank you very much for your attention.